Titans merge into Bruticus! Of all the combiner teams introduced in 1986, hands down my favorite were the Combaticons, Onslaught, Blastoff, Brawl, Swindle, and Vortex. And as their collective name suggests, their vehicle alt modes were based on combat or military vehicles. Duh. Onslaught, their leader, was a transport truck with very, very large guns. Brawl was a tank, Vortex a helicopter, Swindle a jeep, and Blastoff was… a space shuttle. Well, they almost got the theme right. Okay, to be fair, at one point in 2016, Blastoff was released as a Harrier jet. But we'll get to that later on. Anyway, even if the Combaticons were usually handled across different media as a team, each individual Combaticon had a unique personality. The leader, Onslaught, was the brilliant tactician who relished in laying out battle strategies for his team that oftentimes didn't really involve himself. Brawl was your typical brawler, loud and violent. Blastoff was the standoffish egotist who felt he was above everyone else. Vortex was just unhinged and batshit crazy. And arguably the breakaway character of the team, Swindle was an opportunistic and entrepreneurial con man. Oh, and of course, there was their combined mode, the imposing and powerful Bruticus, whose main defining personality trait was that he was, well, stupid, even by Gestalt standards. Oh well, I guess you can't win them all. Aside from their combat theme, another reason why I picked these guys as my favorites was due to their origin story in one of the most memorable episodes from the original G1 cartoon. After failing yet another coup attempt, Starscream is banished by Megatron to a remote island which was the site of multiple battles between the US and Japan during World War II. He sets out to create his own personal army by installing stolen personality components of several Decepticon political prisoners into a number of abandoned military vehicles found all over the island. Yes, apparently there was a space shuttle in World War II. With this new… Brigade, Starscream sets off to take down Megatron yet again, and he nearly succeeds as Bruticus easily dispatches Megatron's original giant, Devastator. Unfortunately for Starscream and the Combaticons though, Megatron had another ace up his sleeve with a second combiner team, the Stunticons, whose combined mode Metasaur took out Bruticus in one awesome blow to the head. Okay, to be fair, he jumped off a cliff for some added momentum. Once defeated, Starscream and the Combaticons are sent off into space on a small asteroid, where they are left to blame each other for their losses. Anyway, I won't go too in-depth into the Combaticons and Bruticus' story in the comics and cartoons. For the most part, they basically did what Decepticons do, which is to cause trouble for the Autobots. Although I will give a special shout out to the previously mentioned breakout member of the team, Swindle, who was basically as despicable and smarmy as Decepticons could get. Actually, to call him a Decepticon would be a stretch, since his true loyalties are ultimately just to himself. Case in point, during the cartoon episode called Bot, following a defeat to their Autobot counterpart Defensor, Swindle, the sole survivor of his team, went off to sell the parts of his fellow Combaticons to various mercenaries and third world dictator types. It was only after Megatron caught up with him and implanted a bomb in his brain that Swindle went off to recover and rebuild his team. In Transformers Animated, it's also worth noting that Swindle was featured as his own character with his own deluxe toy to boot. And he was voiced by one of my favorite comedian actors, the late great Fred, what happened, Willard. In the live action movies, Vortex was heavily speculated to be part of the 2007 Decepticon cast. But that turned out to be a brand new character named Blackout. We also got a brawl and onslaught, but not in the same movie, so the chances that they were both meant to be Combaticons and form Bruticus is pretty slim to none. Oh, and a really, really crappy Swindle toy was released as well that looked nothing like the G1 character. In fact, he was more of a faceless drone. Maybe he was so despicable that he got the Empurata treatment like Shockwave. Anyway, as terrible as this Swindle was, I do have a quick story about him. I remember that during my wedding, I placed a single toy in each flower arrangement per table at the reception. I didn't think anything of it, just a neat easter egg for a random guest to find and take home with them. Little did I know that our wedding photographer used Swindle as a prop for one of her pictures, which was included in our reception slideshow. So there amongst all the beautiful wedding pictures was Swindle, holding our wedding rings, thus giving that awful toy an instant nostalgic connection to me. 
Damn, now I have to find one on eBay. And finally, in the IDW comics, once again, it was Swindle who took the spotlight as he was up to his usual shenanigans of wheeling and dealing. His most memorable feat was when stranded on Earth, he convinced a ragtag contingent of Autobots led by Hot Rod to build him a spaceship to leave the planet. He managed to convince them to cooperate with his fellow Decepticons playing the Why Are We Still Fighting card and buttered up Hot Rod's ego by filling it with sweet ideas of him being referred to by everyone as Rodimus Prime. Secretly though, he was low-key assembling the Stunticons and when the ship was complete, set a newly combined Menasaur to take out all the Autobots. Fortunately, he was foiled by Hot Rod and company and Swindle went off to make friends and offer the Combaticon services to Kim Jong-do, the ruler of North Korea. Other than that though, the Combaticons as a team didn't really do anything else significant and for the most part served as Starscream's security team, I guess as a callback to their cartoon origins. Oh, and they also made Blastoff have an extreme, uh, thing for his leader, Onslaught. But there isn't much I can tell you about that as by then I had already tapped out from the IDW comics. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get into the meat of this story, which would be the toys. But before we go any further, I hope you won't combat against me when I ask you to like and subscribe to my channel. It will help me tell more stories and would be much appreciated. But if you already are a subscriber, thank you and please spread the word. Now, when it comes to the toys, I never did get any G1 Combaticons. My first Combaticons and Bruticus technically weren't even the Combaticons and Bruticus to begin with. Let me explain. Sometime around 2009, I got myself a Transformers Universe Bruticus Maximus box set. While this was far removed from the original toy, it was clear that Hasbro was banking on G1 Nostalgia to sell this set, as despite looking nothing like the original characters, the five robots included in the box sported the same coloring as the original Combaticons. Unlike the G1 Combaticons though, the set was only composed of three unique robot designs and vehicles. You had the big truck guy who formed the torso, but the limbs were composed of two tanks and two helicopters, gone were the jeep and the shuttle. And simply recoloring and renaming the second tank and helicopter to match the original Combaticons did not fly with the fans. It also didn't help that the actual toy itself had very crude engineering. At the time, Hasbro was still getting into the modern combiner design, so I'll cut them some slack. Regardless, in the end, these sets basically ended up clogging up the toy aisles, even after they went on clearance which in turn made it an easy buy for me. But you know the saying that one man's trash is another one's treasure? Well in this case, a then rather unknown but very ambitious third-party company named Fans Project saw the crappy Bruticus Maximus set that nobody wanted and said, you know what? We can do something special with this guy and make some serious money. So let me set the scene. At this point, third-party transformers weren't really a thing. All we had were tiny companies putting out accessory sets for official Hasbro releases in very limited quantities. Anyway, with a good number of memorable upgrade kits and accessories already under their belt, the boys at Fans Project decided to up the ante with later projects. Why stop at making just accessories, they thought. Why not make entire robots? And so we got Munitioner and Explorer, which were essentially Blastoff and Swindle modernized into a flying drone and a Hummer Jeep. These guys were made for the sole purpose of making the rather bland Bruticus Maximus set relevant and just plain cool. Once news and pictures of these two new bots came out online, all the Bruticus Maximus sets basically flew off the shelves with fans dreaming of finally getting a modern and updated version of Bruticus. Now the really cool thing about fans project is that they put a lot of thought into their designs. Despite being one of the very first fully built transformable third party robots, Munitioner and Explorer were very well constructed and came with a ton of accessories for themselves and their fellow team members. Of course, the reason for all the vehicular and individual robot accessories was clear as they all were incorporated into a very much improved combined Bruticus Maximus. A few years later, Hasbro finally upped their combiner game by literally centering an entire toy line around their classic gestalts. The Combiner Wars began in late 2014 and the classic Combaticons that we knew and loved were all released together as part of the fifth wave of toys. With a twist, that is. Always looking for a way to save a buck with reusing molds, a common pattern in the line was to replace a member of each Combiner team with a new character who was actually just a recolor or reuse of another previously released toy. And so for the Combaticons, we got a redesigned Blastoff that transformed into a jet. 
more specifically a recolor and retool of the previously released Firefly of the Aerialbots team, who in turn also got a new member in the helicopter Alpha Bravo. And why a helicopter, you may ask? Well, so that they could recolor the same toy into both the Protectabot Blades and the Combaticon Vortex. Whew, are you following all of that? To be fair, I actually think that Blastoff turning into a jet fit in better with the whole combat vehicle theme. But whatever, it wasn't G1 accurate. Fortunately, Takara wasn't into any of Hasbro's cheap out tactics and released all the major combiner themes as box sets with newly designed and more accurate members. So thanks to Takara, we eventually did get a proper Space Shuttle Blastoff. And with my G1 accurate Bruticus in hand, I went on to do what other serious Combiner Wars collectors did at the time. Upgrade. See, while the official Combiner Wars toys were pretty decent, there was a whole lot of room for improvement. And so, in the spirit of fans project all those years before, a whole new bunch of entrepreneurial third-party companies whipped out their own upgrade accessory sets for our gestalts. I myself opted to get the kit from Transform Dreamwave, and as of this story, this remains my default retail version of Bruticus in my collection. Of course, if you know me, you know I just don't stop at the official retail Transformers, and it's in the larger masterpiece realm where things get even more interesting. It all starts in 2017, and at this point, the third party scene is in full swing. And due to the finite number of G1 characters out there versus the infinite number of third party Transformer companies, it was not uncommon to have multiple versions of the same character all competing for our money at the same time. For many collectors, these were fondly referred to as, insert character's name, Wars. While for the most part, this wealth of options is a great thing, for those with a more limited budget, this basically means a lot of careful discernment and self-rationalization to defend to ourselves the choices that we ultimately make. So let's get into the Bruticus Wars. And that year, two third-party companies, Unique Toys and Zeta Toys, set off to make the ultimate masterpiece-styled Bruticus. Technically, Unique Toys was the older and more established company, having made their debut way back in 2013 with their version of another Decepticon combiner called Predaking. Unfortunately, reviews of that one weren't very good and they were easily overshadowed by two other arguably better Predakings released around the same time. The Predaking Wars, if you will. Since then, they had sort of learned from their mistakes and in general, each successive release got progressively better. Regardless though, nothing they had done up to that point had really interested me, so I had no first-hand experience with any of their stuff. Zeta Toys, on the other hand, was a much newer company. In name. I don't claim to be an expert on these things, but the word going around was that Zeta was actually composed of designers who had recently left a much older company called Toy World over some paid disputes. So while Zeta itself was technically a new company, the work of their designers under Toy World were pretty well known by collectors. And boy, did they make quite an impression before breaking out on their own. Quite possibly the most popular release by Toy World up to this time was their take on a masterpiece scale devastator called Constructor, which was a true game changer in the industry. Prior to his release in 2016, all unofficial combiner toys basically tapped out at a maximum height of around 14 to 15 inches. The reason for this was a practical one. Taller combiners meant bigger and heavier robots. And when you have a big, heavy robot composed of five smaller ones, well, stability becomes a major issue. And this was basically the case with almost all combiner toys up to this point. They were mostly all unstable messes. But Constructor basically broke the mold, coming in at a hulking 20 inches. So how did Toy World manage to produce a huge robot that didn't just topple over? Well, they employed an old and sometimes controversial design choice in order to keep their giant pretty stable parts forming. Basically, the combined form relied on parts that were made solely for that mode, specifically a solid and dedicated hip and upper leg portion that was just put off to the side when the combiner was split up into its individual components. This was as opposed to the traditional design of having the main torso bot form the entire gestalt body up to the thighs where the limb robots would attach to. While on paper this made sense, in the real world, using the torso bot's regular sized hips to handle all the added weight and pressure of the four other limb bots was usually asking too much, and which led to a lot of stability issues. Aesthetically as well, this usually also made the combined form look proportionally off. So yeah, Constructor was the biggest combiner to date, and the most stable to boot. 
and everyone knew that the guys behind Zeta Toys were responsible for it, and a year later, they had their sights on Bruticus. Now given the track records of the two companies, it would seem like pretty much a no-brainer as to whose Bruticus would be the superior one. That is, until the first pictures came out of their prototypes. Out of the gate, Zeta showed their versions of the Combaticons Blastoff and Vortex, who traditionally formed the arms of Bruticus, and they were quite unimpressive in my opinion. Both looked extra bulky and chock full of extra cable in robot modes, and based on their Vortex, whose helicopter mode looked more like Blackout from the live-action movie rather than his more simpler G1 copter design, they seem to be going for a more stylized, modern approach to their vehicle designs. Unique Toys, on the other hand, went with the two Combaticon leg robots, Swindle and Brawl, and they looked amazing. For me, it was love at first sight, and just like that, based on these two releases, I decided to go with their Bruticus set instead. And I didn't waver in my choice even when it was revealed that their combined Bruticus would be significantly shorter than Constructor at 16 inches and employ the traditional combiner engineering. I fell that hard for their brawl and swindle. Now the main reason that I was okay with my Bruticus being shorter than Constructor was that I was simultaneously all in on another Decepticon combiner set from another company, the Stunticons by X Transbots and their combined Menasaur was going to be smaller than Constructor as well, so I was good. I equated it to a Pacific Rim 1 vs 2 situation. Since Devastator was the original combiner, it was okay for him to be bigger. And like the newer Jaegers in the second Pacific Rim movie, I saw Menasaur and Bruticus as more advanced combiners who were smaller, compact, and more efficient. And so with that, I went full seam ahead down the Unique Toys route. And in about a year's time, I had the complete set and was very happy with my choice. Until I wasn't. See, while both Unique Toys and Zeta did a good job in finishing up their Bruticuses, or Bruticai, within a reasonable time period, X Transbots seemed to be taking their time with Menasaur. It turned out that the main reason for the delay was that midway through production, X Transbots went back to the drawing board to rework the design of the trailer section of their leader, Motormaster's truck mode which was designed to form the main torso of Menasaur. They basically decided to go for a bigger Menasaur in order to match the height of the Zeta combiners. And just like that, all my reasonings and rationalizations for having a smaller Bruticus went out the window. And all of a sudden, my unique toy set was the odd team out of my combiners collection, and I had to think long and hard on what to do next. Again, the main reason why I went with Unique Toys in the first place was that I preferred their individual modes over Zeta. But as great as the individual bots were, at the end of the day, they were going to be displayed as Bruticus. And as far as Bruticus went, height-wise, Zeta fit better with what I had in my collection. So yeah, it was quite the collector's dilemma. I know what some of you may be thinking, just get both! Unique Toys to display as Combaticons and the Zeta one for Bruticus, which would make sense if I were a millionaire, again, limited budget, and I wanted to keep my marriage. Initially, I planned to go the custom route. See, the main problem with the Unique Toys Bruticus was that their torso bot onslaught was kinda undersized. Fortunately, there was a customizer who made 3D printed pieces that allowed people to use the Zeta onslaught along with the more stable parts forming torso, hands and feet, and use the limb bots of the Unique Toys set. This basically would give me a bigger Bruticus without having to sacrifice most of my Unique Toys individual bots that I really loved. It was basically the best of both worlds. All I had to do was get myself the 3D printed custom conversion set and the Zeta Onslaught who conveniently came with all the parts firing pieces and that would solve everything. Unfortunately, I found out that it would be quite costly to go down this way. First of all, the 3D pieces were being produced by a customizer in South America which is pretty far away from the Philippines. Unfortunately, and understandably, he was not open to selling his 3D designs that I could have printed locally here. He was selling printed out and painted pieces with the entire set costing around $100. Add international shipping and that would be quite a lot. Plus, I would have to get the Zeta Onslaught himself. Since he was released individually a few years back, he was no longer in stock with most local and online sellers. I did eventually find a seller in Hong Kong who still had stock, but again, this would be quite expensive to obtain as well. Factoring all the costs involved, it didn't make any sense financially to go this route, especially since I would spend a mere fraction of that cost if I had just outright sold my unique toy set and bought myself a Zeta one, who was at the time readily available as a reissued box set with improved paint and design fixes. 
So ultimately, this was the way I decided to go. As much as it pained me to part with my unique toys Combaticons, Common Sense, and the bigger Bruticus won out. As luck would have it, I was able to find a local collector and more importantly, a Bruticus enthusiast who was specifically looking for a unique toy set. And as if faded in the stars, he also had a spare, brand new Zeta Bruticus in hand. And so we basically made a straight up trade with some additional cash on my part to make up for the difference in value. And as an added bonus, the guy literally brought the Zeta set to the front door of my house, which was a godsend as this was during COVID and I was dreading having to possibly do a meetup anywhere else outside given the situation. Anyway, initially I was rather lukewarm on actually making the trade as I really loved my unique toys Combaticons and doing this felt more like something I had to do for some peace of mind rather than something I wanted to do. I figured that in the long run, staring at a tiny Bruticus amongst all my taller gestalts would bother me even more in the future. Either way, it took me over two weeks to finally mess around with the Zeta Combaticons. And I have to say, maybe it was due to my lowered expectations. I was quite impressed with the set, especially the individual robot modes. Yes, the designs still look complicated and overthought, but on a whole, they were all very solid toys and fairly fun and straightforward to mess around with. An added bonus being that the updated metallic paint on these guys was just gorgeous. At the end of the day, this set completely won me over. And of course, the PS de resistance, Bruticus himself. The reason I decided to go this route is simply amazing. He's large, hulking, and completely stable. Anyway, if you want more combiner stories, why not check out my story about a combiner that I made up myself? It was quite a monstrous creation. Or any other Transformers story for that matter. Either way, thanks for watching and hope you come back for more.